the flowers are different. Just keep going. Just keep going. So I just kept getting back up. And after every failure, which there are thousands of them, and just kind of like dusted off the like embarrassment and just got back up and kept going. And then we have been, I mean, we're coming up on 15 years. So I heard you say before, like there is no such thing as an overnight success. It's usually like a decade in the making at least. Yes. It is so much hard work and you just keep, basically you just got to get okay with like sucking and failing right? Yeah. You're, just, you're so bad for so long. You just got to keep going. So don't lose heart if you're not good yet. <laughs> just keep getting back up. Hey, it's Marie Forleo and welcome to another episode of Marie TV and the Marie Forleo podcast. And I got to tell you, I am so excited about my guest today. Oh my goodness. So first of all, she's a force of nature. Second of all, she's got a new show on the Magnolia Network and I saw the first episode and it's amazing. Third of all, she is a B-school grad. If you have ever wondered if you have what it takes to take your somewhat impossible dream and make it real, you are gonna love today's show. Erin Benzacane is the founder of Floret Farms and is one of the nation's leading farmer florists. She's the author of three books, Floret Farms Cut Flower Garden, which won the American Horticultural Society's Book Award, the New York Times bestseller Floret Farms A Year in Flowers, and most recently, Discovering Dahlias. She's received the Martha Stewart American Made Award for Floral and Event Design and has been featured across countless books, magazines, and websites. Growing Floret, a series from the Magnolia Network, is streaming now on Discovery+. Plus. Oh my goodness, Erin, thank you so much for making time to be here. I have to say, I have your books in front of me. Oh my awesome. goodness. They are so gorgeous. Like, I'm losing my mind. And I have to tell you, our entire team is like obsessed. We've been obsessed with you for years. This morning, I watched the first episode of your show on the Magnolia Network, and I was literally like, what? And I could not wait to talk to you today. How are you Aww. doing? So good and so busy. It's like the middle of the growing season. It's just, it's flat out. We're just running right now. Yes, you are. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay. So for, for folks that don't know your story, take us back to the beginning. What was your first memory of flowers and how did that seed plant what has grown into this incredible mission and business and career that you have today? So when I was little, um, I would go visit my great grandmother in the summertime and she was very ill and, and laying in bed all the time and would tell me stories of their farm that they used to have and the garden that she used to grow. And then she'd send me outside into the little tiny garden beds around their house and have me pick bouquets and bring them inside for her. And those were the happiest memories growing up. And she nicknamed me her little flower girl. So when she passed away, I actually brought home some of her ashes and planted them in my very first garden. And I planted a double row of sweet peas in her memory, just like wanting to bring Grammy into my new life. Yes. And those flowers bloomed so abundantly. I mean, I picked them, I filled our house with them, I gave them to the neighbors, I gave them to everybody I knew. Um, and it was at the same time I was trying to figure out like, what did I want to do with my life? What was my calling? What was I put here to do? So it was this really important time and Grammy was with me or her memory along that journey. Yeah. So, um, first of all, I love sweet peas. I never even knew what they were until a few years ago when I started spending more time in California. And, uh, there's like a, a farmer's market near my house there and they are the flowers that I get constantly. It's like the yeah. best $5 that I spend every single week. They bring me so much joy and totally. so much happiness. Like I put them on, I'm like, I don't care. You're going to see sweet peas again and again and again because these exactly. things are amazing. So I know that you also had a pretty transformative experience when you actually kind of sold your first mm -hmm. bouquet. Can you tell us about that? So I was trying to figure out like, what the heck am I going to do for a business? I have two small kids. I wanted to do something creative. I wanted to be home. So I was trying out all these business ideas. And it's so funny to me that the flowers were blooming in my yard, but it didn't even occur to me that that could be a business. So someone ordered a $5 jar of sweet peas and I was so freaked out and nervous. I'm like, okay, my first order. So 
I drove like 45 minutes away with my little jar of flowers and I was trying to like ding dong ditch and just drop the flowers on her front porch and just drive <laughs> away. But she caught me and yeah. I was so nervous. I just like pushed them into her hands and she started crying, telling me about her grandmother. Then I started crying, talking about Grammy. And it was like this thing happened. It just like seeing the power that those, like that simple little jar could have on another person and how quickly we were connected in that moment. And our hearts were just open and we were just, we were so present. I just, I knew right then, like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Something with flowers. They're too powerful. Like this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. And so you didn't, you, it sounds like, wow. So you had started just selling these little bouquets because you had them, mm -hmm. but you had no idea what this thing could become. One of the other things that I admire mm -hmm. about you so much, you and your husband and your whole team, you guys have such an incredible work ethic. And obviously, you know me, like that's a huge part mm -hmm. of, of my history and my family. And um, it's a balance, right? It's like, I have this drive and this passion and this mission um, and I love what I do, but I also never want to overdo it because I want to be here for the long term. Right. Where I want to go with you right now, though, I think when people start to really see what you've created, they see the show, they see these incredible books. I'm like, y'all, Erin didn't start out this way. Like, it's not all sweet nope. peas and dahlias and, you know, she, her and her husband, like you guys, you had a tremendous amount of debt, right? That's how I started mm -hmm. my business. Can you tell us a little bit about what those early days were like? Because I think there's many people in the audience that either they're in that stage right now, or maybe they're just getting out of it. And uh, it's important to be able to hear hear that side also while you see like, oh, she's got a show on Magnolia. Yeah, no, it, it started in my backyard and it stayed in my backyard for years. Like really just me fumbling along, making a thousand mistakes, not making any money, um, like killing so many plants, just really <laughs> sucking at it for a really long time. Nobody wanted to buy anything. It wasn't like... <laughs> We were an overnight success. I was like cramming this idea down people's throat and nobody was into it. Yes. It actually took me a really long time, but I just kept at it. And Chris would always say to me when I would lose faith, like, I don't think this is it. I don't think I'm supposed to have a business. I feel so uncomfortable. This freaks me out. I'm so bad at this. He's like, the flowers are different. Just keep going. Just keep going. So I just kept getting back up. And after every failure, which there are thousands of them, and just kind of like dusted it off the like embarrassment and just got back up and kept going. And then we have been, I mean, we're coming up on 15 years. So I heard you say before, like there is no such thing as an overnight success. It's usually like a decade in the making, at least. Yes. It is so much hard work. And you just keep, you basically you just got to get okay with like sucking and failing, right? Yeah. You just, you're so bad for so long. You just got to keep going. So don't lose heart if you're not good yet. <laughs> just keep getting back up. Yeah. And I love just hearing that, you know, you and your husband, you were like, you know what? We have choices about this debt, right? It's like yeah. we could declare bankruptcy. That's one choice. And that's yep. not a bad choice at all. But y'all were like, you know what? No, we're just going to handle this and we're going to sell as many flowers as we possibly yep. can pay this off and then start, you know, growing from there. And I just, I thought that was amazing. Um, yeah, debt was a giant motivator. That's really where the business came from and what gave me the courage to keep going because we had to pay off the debt and we used the money we made with flowers to do it, but it took us a long time, yeah. um, but we just kept at it. And I'm so glad we did. Yeah. And you know, I remember when I first started the, the scarcity around money is part of my own story with my mom and all kinds of, you know, deep, yeah. deep stuff. We've talked about this before, but that was a great motivator because it kicked my Absolutely. butt. So it was like both the mission and this heart thing, but then also just like, girls got to survive. <laughs> exactly. Right? We got to pay the mortgage. Yes. Let's do this. Yeah. Yep. And keep it together. The, one of the other things I love that you, um, that you basically shared was like, you know, the number one thing that people email you, because of course they see these books and they see this farm. Even someone on my team yep. is like, oh my gosh, you know, I want to go visit the farm. And I didn't get a chance to tell you. I'm like, ain't nobody going to see the farm. So like <laughs> the fact that all these customers, all of these fans, mm -hmm. all these people are like, please, can I come see the farm? And you're like, no. So here's where I want to go with this, because you know this, because you're a B-schooler. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. 
But I try my best for myself and also for anyone that comes through the doors at B-School to say, you know what? You hold the reins in your business. You yeah. get to design this thing in a way that's both going to be of service to the world and to have a great mission, something that you believe in with your heart. And it also gets to serve who you are as a unique soul and who you are and how you want to live. And I love that you're like, I actually live here with my family. Exactly. <laughs> I don't want all kinds of people coming to the farm. So can we talk about just the, the power of saying no and the power of deciding like who you are and who you are not when it comes to your business? Yeah, that has been, so I'm a pretty extreme introvert. Like I'm very, not so shy, like I'm driven, but I am freaked out by people and definitely crowds. Like I'm happy to work with the plants. I love sharing. I love um, teaching. I love all of that, like putting it out, but the in-person exchange is kind of terrifying. And that is the number one email we get. Can I come to the farm? And early on, we just decided like we're we have to honor ourselves. We're not going to open the farm up to the public and they can get a virtual farm tour on our website. <laughs> we will make videos and we will take pictures and share and we will share a lot, but in a way that is healthy and good for us. Yes. Yeah. And I love that too. And I also love, can you share with people? Cause you're like, I have a flower farm, but I no longer sell the flower. So I have a personal yeah. question about that, but just so people understand kind of the revenue streams and what the business model is. Can you share? So our business is actually now kind of like three, I wouldn't even call them baby businesses, but it's three businesses in one. So one arm of it is education where it's books, our online course where we're teaching. A lot of it is free. Some of it is paid, but that's like a big part of our business. The other is our seed company. So we actually sell flower seeds, so many flower seeds to people all over the world so they can grow the garden of their dreams. And then there's the farm itself where we grow the seeds and we learn all of the stuff that we teach. So the farm is kind of like the base for both of the main businesses, but it also earns its own money because we grow the seeds here. Not all of them, but a big portion of them. So it's kind of a complicated, big thing. It's gotten bigger over the years, but it's not clear cut and straightforward. So question for you, what do you do then? Like uh, with all of those flowers, you're, cause mm -hmm. I'm, I'm watching the show and I'm like, oh yeah. my God, like Aaron's yeah. got 24 acres, which we're going to talk about that transition in a minute. So uh, you're doing it for the seeds and obviously for the research and the development and mm -hmm. that whole piece of the business sounds fascinating to me too. So then what do you do with all these blooms, especially now that we're in growing season? So for the first 10 years of business, we sold all of those flowers to grocery stores. Our biggest customer is Whole Foods. We did tens of thousands of bouquets and bunches every season. So we were in the business of fresh flowers, but as our business grew and changed, it's like we have a global audience. How can we best serve them? So that's when we transitioned from local, fresh, perishable into seeds. So now all those flowers, we actually let them bloom. We let the bees pollinate them. They then set seeds and we collect those seeds and then sell them. So the flowers aren't going to waste. They're just turning into something else. Like so much possibility. That is incredible. And like every time when the books came, I literally, Erin, I was like gobsmacked. I sat here and I looked through all of them. I learned so much in right such a short amount of time. And it's just like, it's the most magical what you are creating, what you have created, what you put out into the world. It is just, it's mystical and magical and, and heavenly, truly, 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 truly. So let me take us back. When you took B-School, you were still mm -hmm. a small farm yeah. selling bouquets and bunches. Did I get that right? Yep. So okay. in, I think it was 2013 or 2014, I was about five years into selling bouquets and I was in the garage making, I mean, in my bouquet career, I've made about 40,000 mixed bouquets by hand myself with either Chris or the kids. I mean, so I was in the garage making these bouquets going, this can't be all there is to my life. Like I want more. I have more to share. I love flowers, but there has to be something more. And I had discovered you not long before that. And I, something just kept coming back to me. Like you need to, you need to go here. You need to, you need to do something for yourself. 
And at the time we were just on the end of paying off our debt. I had no extra money. So it was such a massive stress stretch to enroll in B school. I was so freaked out about it. I'm like, okay, if I do this, I am going to do every single freaking homework assignment. I'm going to be your best student. I'm going to go all in. Did I ever, I mean, I took everything I learned in B school and applied it, totally transformed our business. Then I started teaching in-person workshops, the book. I pitched the book after that, the first one, second, third, the seed company came from there. You had us do this homework where we were looking at what we were currently doing, what people wanted from us and where did it overlap? Like where did what you wanted to do and what people wanted, that was really what you should start looking at. It hadn't even occurred to me that there was more possibility out there. Our business took off after B school. So the first four years after I took it, I re I audited the class and redid the entire thing start to finish for the first four years. And then since then, I retake it every time it's offered. And then I audit little portions like, okay, we need to go deeper into our website or I want to get better with copywriting. So I, I audit it now in portions, but I've ta- retaken it every year since. And it still has so much value. I don't even know how you made it. <laughs> it still blows my mind. Like you are the gold standard. I'm always like, what would Marie do? <laughs> so I mean, it completely changed my life, completely changed our business really what you've created and what you do is unbelievable really well this is a mutual admiration society because by the way thank you so much for those kind words but you did the work like you're on our team we always were like what about Aaron like when we hear someone they're going like well I can't really do it like I have a wedding mm-hmm. covenant I'm like you know that I was like and we have so many incredible b-schoolers but but to talk about you for a minute here it's this idea of just investing in yourself and believing mm-hmm. in this flower farm and having the courage to go, okay, there's more for me and, and I'm going to yes. invest in this thing and I'm going to do everything. You did the work and then you keep doing the work and keep doing the work. So mm-hmm. here's where I'm going to go next. So you grew this business from nothing, which we've talked about. Yeah. Tell me what was happening in your heart when you said, okay, now we're here. Where was the idea to go from the the two acres to the 24? Tell me when that came about. Was it something that you had been like nibbling on for a few years? Did it come in one big burst? Well, we had been... We had been looking for other farms, like more property, something bigger, something more, I don't know, exciting. And life just kept holding us here on this two acres. I'm like, I have got to get out of here. I want to do more. I want to grow. But it just we kept being held down or back, which was so good now looking back because it forced me to really understand how to do a lot with nothing or very little. Like it just kept, I kept refining. And out of blue, the blue, our elderly neighbors decided to sell their farm, which borders ours. It's like right next door. We had been looking for years. Um... And they had been watching us out their bedroom window working for the last decade, just killing ourselves basically out there just working so hard. And they said, if anybody can keep the farm alive, it's you guys. And so all those years we thought that they were laughing at us, they were actually cheering us on and they let us buy the farm. Oh my so God. it was, it was totally a like meant to be moment, but we went from two to 24 and everything that we've developed and learn and know really well didn't apply. And so it was like, what have we done? It was like meant to be, but also, oh my God, what did we do? Yeah. So, okay. I have to ask you this as a business owner, because I was thinking about this. You are such a producer and you're so driven. I'm a producer and I'm driven and Mm -hmm. I'm I'm going like, okay, I'm watching the first episode of um, Growing Florette and I'm going like, okay, I have to ask Erin, like, when did Magnolia reach out to you? Did you did you connect with them otherwise? Because the timing of this, I was like, I know. this is amazing. super weird. It yeah. w- was it to you too? Because I'm like, wait a minute, this is like the perfect docu series, but they're yeah. filming as they got this additional amount of land, and you're like, what the hell do we do with it? How do we fix this soil? What was that? It timeline? seemed like th- that really felt like. So we had bought the property and had it for maybe a year and a half, but we were letting it sit. I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Obviously, we're supposed to have this, but I'm not clear. And normally I know. Normally I can see where we're going. I know exactly what I want to do. I'm very clear, not with the property. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And someone who was close to Joanna had ordered a book for her and hand delivered it. 
And she messaged me that she loved the book and we made that connection. And then uh, maybe a year or two later, they reached out when the network was coming and asked if we could be part of the network and if they could document the process of taking our farm and turning it into something. And it was like, the timing couldn't have been more perfect. And they wanted to tell the real story. Like nothing's manufactured. Yep. None of it's fake. I mean, nobody knew what was going to happen. They're like, we're going to follow you for the next year, year and a half, and just see what happens. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> I hope well, I don't fail. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask about that too, because that's like A, a lot of pressure. And B, Tons. you said, you were like, okay, I'm an introvert. And as someone who's on camera a lot, it's really funny because sometimes we'll discuss projects like internally and the team often knows, you know, Josh is an actor. He's used to having a camera mm -hmm. on him when he's on set. You know what I mean? And right. it's like, then he wants to be home and he's like, get the camera out of my face. And so I, yep. I was curious to ask you what that decision making process look like too, because obviously it's your husband, it's your kids, it's your whole team. Mm -hmm. It's And I was curious about the timeline. So did, did you guys film over a year? We filmed, so we started filming about a week ago, two years now, right now. Wow. So like it has, it was a long time. We filmed for over a year and a half, but from the beginning, we were like, okay, we're not going to be like brushing our teeth and processing <laughs> our life in front of the camera. Like not going to happen. The kids are not going to be like, they don't want to really be that big of a part of this. Yes. So we were just really straight from the beginning. Like, I'm so happy to share what I'm going through as a female business owner, you know, like a family business. I think this should be talked about. Like this is a really challenging thing to do. And I don't feel like anybody ever really talks about what it actually takes to do this. Yes. So I felt like that was an incredible opportunity, but we were like, we're not going to open up parts of our life that we didn't feel comfortable with, which was great. Like that was right from the beginning. We made great boundaries and and it's funny because even though I'm an introvert, being in front of the camera is not nerve wracking. I don't know why. It's It's something about it just feels like I'm supposed to do it. So you're excellent. It was actually, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> but it was really, it was actually amazing to be able to bring the the crew in and let them see the beauty of our world, but also paired with like how difficult it actually is to do all this and how much work goes into it. I loved that they actually told the whole story. Yes. And yeah. the thing that was so both inspiring, um, it was inspiring to me to learn about the soil. I had, have you seen that documentary? I think it's called Kiss the Ground. Yeah. About regenerative. Yeah. And yep. so it, that, that triggered that for me when I was watching episode one and it was like, God, we have all of this soil, but it's not alive, right? It's like, there's so much work that you have to put into it. Um, that was really awesome. And just to watch it again, I, I only saw episode one cause that's, that's what was up by the time when we're recording this right now, but it, it's just, I'm so excited by what you're doing and what this show will show the world about how we can take care of the earth, how we can produce so much beauty, how it, it's just, you, you guys, it's, it's amazing. Really, really right good. On. Yeah. And like in a real and tangible way, not yeah. just theory, but like, how can you actually do it in your real life? Yes. Yeah. So I, a note that I heard you say was that you learned so much about storytelling in this process. What mm -hmm. did you learn? Through the process of filming the show? Yeah. Well, if, stepping back and actually seeing what, um, the director saw, like actually seeing our story and the different storylines and the different pieces that they were going to follow. I'm normally in it. Like I'm in the story and I do know how to t do some storytelling, like in, like in teaching mode, but this was like an even bigger, a bigger view of all the different storylines. And you have to wait to see where it goes before you can actually, typically I know the story I want to tell. And then we figure out how to tell it. With this, they were just taking it in, taking it in, documenting it. And the end, they're going to decide what story to tell. But everything about it was so honest and true. Yep. It was beautiful. Nothing, nothing fake manufactured, no drama, no garbage. I mean, it was very authentic. No, you can feel that. You can totally feel yeah. that. Curious, what's been the scariest part for you, whether about the show or just about this growth process? And like, where are you guys at right now? 
with the farm and with this whole new acreage. Like I loved seeing you map out your kind of dream plottage of like, okay, these are going here and this is going there. And you that part where you were writing with your yep. colored pencils. I was like, oh, yep. I'm like dying. T- tell me everything. So I would say with the show, the scariest part was just like, oh my God, we're opening ourselves up to the world. Like I don't, that's not ever anything I wanted to do. So that has been just something that we're processing and preparing for. I would say the biggest challenge at the moment is like knowing where to go for answers when you check in with yourself and you just don't know. Like we're not a startup anymore. This is not a small business anymore. I mean, we're definitely down the road a little ways and knowing where to go for answers about like, what do you do next? What do you do when you've outgrown everything you can possibly do? You've completely hit capacity. You're maxed on every level. You can't do anymore. What do you do now? Like, who do you even talk to about that? So the last couple of years have really been like, Uh, growing pains, but also just like hitting the ceiling of what we've been doing. And like, where do we go from here? Yes. That's a, I mean, do you want to talk about that for a second? Cause I actually love that. It's a big challenge. And I also think it's a really big opportunity and you know this, so I'm not telling you anything Mm -hmm. that you don't know, but my perspective on that, Erin is like, you know, once you kind of start hitting all of those check boxes and you're like, oh, dreams coming true. Oh, this dream's coming true. Oh, this dream's coming true. Then I think what I find to be useful is often stepping back and go, what else would I like to create and how do I want to create it? So let me give you some context for that. I remember in my own business when I started to kind of reach a level for me that I'm like, oh my goodness, we're doing all the things that I ever wanted to do. So like, what's next? Then for me, it was about going deeper and going, well, what do I want this one gorgeous life to be like, like on a day-to-day basis? And I think one of the gifts of COVID for me last year, um, you know, I lost my grandmother who was amazing. She had a very, very long life. We lost her to COVID, but again, it's, it's all good. So many people lost so many loved ones. But one of the things that came to me was just like, okay, well, what do I want these next decades to feel like on a day-to-day level? So in my, you know, twenties and early thirties, like I would put in 12, sometimes 18 hour days, right? Because that's what I did. That's my choice. That's what I believed I needed to do. And maybe I did need to do that to get where I am because here's where I am, but I don't want to do that anymore. Right. And I'm not doing that anymore. And I think that for me, kind of imagining into what are these other things that I want to experience? How do I want to continue my mission in a way that feels so spacious and so sustainable and so adventuresome? Where are the other places where I want to play? Not with pressure, like I have to get any place, but from a total place of joy. Does that make any kind of sense? I love that. Yes. I've always wondered, like once you hit all of those big goals and you're you're succeeding, right? Now what do you do? And just because something's succeeding, if it does not lining up with you anymore, is it okay to set it down? Because yes. everyone's saying don't. Everyone tells me like, no, why would you ever? And then you, that's like all the feedback is keep doing what you're doing, even if it's too much or even if it's no. not working. I will be the voice for you, Erin. I adore you. I love you. First of all, you know this because uh, you know my teaching. I believe that every single person is their own wisest and truest guide, right? So Mm -hmm. I don't have all the answers. Erin has the answers. You have the answers for you inside. And of course, we need uh, Julia Cameron, who wrote The Artist's Way. She has this incredible term that she calls believing mirrors. Friends, colleagues, mentors, people who believe in you and can reflect back to you your own thoughts and feelings and hesitations and just really kind of hold space for you to find your own truth. And for me, I think that it is the bravest thing to be able to listen to yourself when it says, oh, I've done this thing for so long. Like Just like your example, when it was like, oh, I sold flowers for this long and now I'm done with that. And people all want to come to the farm, but that's no, that's a boundary. 
there's something bubbling up in you probably yeah. and yep. it's you can't rush it just like you know this from your flowers right you can't make them grow faster than they grow right i right. experienced this when um i had a bunch of publishers going like we need a book from marie we need a book from marie and i knew it was supposed to be everything is figure outable but like the whole idea wasn't formed yet it almost felt like it was a seed in the ground and it was february Right. And it's not coming out nope. <laughs> until, it's, until it's ready exactly. to come out, right? And you just and I had to be patient. And everyone's like, "But you could just write a book right now. You should just write a book right now." And just blah, blah, blah. and I was like, "No, I am listening to this thing because my heart right. has always led me to the most glorious, magical, connected." places. And I'm not going to change that now. And so for you, it's like, uh, you know, we can talk offline, but I'm sure people will be enjoying this. Like, no, Marie, tell what are you going to tell her? Uh, journaling. I don't know if you do that. Yeah. Do you journal? I do. You do. Okay. But I could be more intentional with it. Yeah. So I, there's um, a specific exercise that I've done several times, especially when things feel just like a little cloudy or I feel like I'm in a transition, right? I'm in a, a period where there's like, oh, there's something new coming, but I don't know what that is yet. And it's really about asking my, my higher self, what advice do you have for me on X topic? What mm. would be the best thing for me to know about where I'm going next. And you literally say, dear, you can either say higher self or you can, if you have a, a God that you pray to, anything that you believe in. And then you actually just let your hand start moving. And it is uncanny, Erin. I reread my journal the other day um, from periods when I've done this kind of guided journaling in the morning. I'm like, who wrote this? She's smart. She is <laughs> yeah. so smart. It doesn't even sound like my voice. It doesn't even sound like normal Marie voice. I'm like, that's some other version of Marie that may exist in the universe. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you to try that. And if there's okay. anything that keeps whispering up around, you don't have to do this anymore, or there's a piece of the business or a piece of just even what you're doing day to day that you're like, you know what? I'm kind of done with this. Please, yeah. Aaron, trust that. Trust Thank that. Thank you. One of the things- I so that needed to hear that. I so <laughs> needed to hear that. It is only the voices of fear and scarcity that have you wanting to hold on to things or to think that you need to keep everything going and all these plates going or that you're going to somehow lose your success. I found for me, those are always thoughts and ideas rooted in a sense of lack as mm -hmm. though if you let something go, that something else new isn't going to come and replace it in a way that is so far beyond anything that you've had before. I don't know Thank how you. we just got all here. I'm like, people, are, this, <laughs> this is so what I wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I'm going to, we'll connect with Louise after, but I have more ideas for you, but I know people are going to be like, okay, so let me get back to business wise um, for you. So it sounds like, first of all, the show is so exciting. It's coming out. I'm mm -hmm. so thrilled for you. Um, what's happening now that you're, that you're really excited about in terms of the business and, and the seeds and the online classes? Like, is there anything that you want people to pay extra attention to? Well, we have an online flower farming course or flower growing course, which is so awesome. So we did in-person workshops for five years and sold out within minutes. I mean, we did like one year, we did seven in-person workshops, which spanned three days. They sold out in two minutes. Like we just, we couldn't do it anymore. It was just too much. So we transitioned to online. We have a whole program and there are like thousands and thousands of people all over the world who have learned how to grow flowers in their backyards and little farms. I mean, the local seasonal flower movement is thriving. It's that, so I am so thrilled like with what is happening there. And then here on the farm, I've actually been breeding new flower varieties, which is crazy because I have no background in science. Like, it's not like I even know what I'm doing, but it's working. <laughs> so really, it, that's been a really, really fun thing to do is like the big companies never listen to any of us smaller growers. They, they asked us what we wanted. We told them they didn't do it. So I'm like, let's just do it ourselves. Let's just see if we can't breed things that need to exist. So that's what we're doing. How exciting. Okay. Yeah. Any messages that you have um, right, right now when this is airing, we are actually doing our first ever B-School summer session. Whether it is about entrepreneurship in general or B-School in particular, if someone's on the fence thinking like, God, I have this dream, whatever their dream may be about um, starting their own business or taking a new path, what would you say to them? 
I would say go for it. Absolutely go for it. If it's in your heart to do, you will find a way and you will figure it out. And B school absolutely changed my life. But if you do it, you better do the homework because if you do, the more you put in, the more you will get out. So if you show up and you give your best and you go through the program, whatever little seed of an idea is in your heart will become this amazing thing. It It's about how much you put in. Yeah. hundred percent. Erin, you are so loved. I love you. Our team loves you. Thank you for creating so much beauty in this world. You are such an inspiration. And thank you for taking time in the middle of your busy season to come talk. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Wasn't that awesome? Erin is amazing. And now we would love to hear from you. So we talked about so many things. I want to know what's the biggest insight or aha you are taking away from this conversation and how can you put that insight into action starting right now? And by the way, if you, my friend, are interested in joining us for B-School, you have to come to joinbschool.com, get in on it. We are doing a summer session. We have never done that before. It would be my honor and my joy to work with you on taking your business to the stratosphere. But back to this conversation, we always talk about the episodes over at the magical land of marieforleo.com. So go on over there and leave a comment now. And by the way, If you're not yet subscribed to our email list, I don't know what you're thinking. Become an MF Insider. Every single Tuesday, we send inspiring, action-oriented emails, and I promise you, it's like a little love bomb in your inbox. You don't want to miss out. Until next time, stay on your game and keep going for your dreams because, yes, the world really does need that very special gift that only you have. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you next time. Hey, are you ready to bring your dream business to life? Is it finally time to make the difference you were born to make? Good, because we can help. Get started now at joinbschool.com.